sing song number 214. We normally sing it on the way out of church, but I hope that we know what this hope that burns within our hearts. 214. <laughs> Thank you to each and every one of you for being here with us. It is indeed a great honor and a joy to welcome you all to this special event. We are very pleased to see you all. Welcome. A special thanks to AUA. We are proud of you that you are able to host all of us in this wonderful place. This is uh, Advent Hill community. It is a big community. We have ECD family here, Advent Hill Primary School, Maxwell Academy, AUA, Adra, Maranatha, GCAS, BMW. Everyone is Welcome. Um, we will be flying to Tanzania uh, this afternoon. Uh, therefore, 
we will shorten some of our our program and we ask you to bear with us we will have our opening song after our opening song professor injeti will pray the opening prayer then uh, maxwell adventist academy a choir will sing where after dr brasius ruguri the ecd president will do the introduction let me welcome sister stera for the opening prayer uh, opening song sister stera with your team We shall rise for opening song 598 watch ye saints <laughs> Please. 
Righteous Father in heaven, we have gathered here this morning to give you praise, honor, and glory. Lord, it is our desire that our Lord Jesus comes and takes us home. Oh, Father, we thank you for many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Blessings of health, safety, and fellowship. And we have gathered this morning, O oh Father, to listen to your word and your message to us today. We are thankful that you have brought our leaders amidst us. We are thankful that our world leader, Elder Ted Wilson, and Mrs. Wilson are here. We want to pray, Father, for a special blessing upon them. We want to pray, Lord, as your servant ministers to your people around the world in preparation for your soon coming. I pray that you will continue to fill him with your spirit. May you provide him safety as he travels. And Lord, may you continue to use him mightily in your work. We pray for the many issues and the challenges and the plans and the dreams that this church has. And we pray, Father, that you will continue to use him and his team at the world headquarters, that we may be able to proclaim the everlasting gospel and prepare a people for your kingdom. We also pray for our leaders who are in this territory, Elder Ruguri and Mrs. Ruguri. I pray, Father, that you will continue to use him in your service. With the many wonderful things that are happening in this division, I pray that you will give him discernment and wisdom as he leads out, O oh Father. May your name be glorified. I pray for the team of leaders in this institution, the ECD division. I pray that you'll continue to be with them, O oh Father, as they serve thee. We want to pray this morning for the various members of various entities that are gathered here, for each and every person that is here. As we listen to your word, we pray that you'll send your spirit so that we may understand and obey your voice. To this end, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
uh, I will not say a word about the great ministry of this choir. I will leave it up to our guest to comment and make remarks about what he felt as they praised the Lord with that wonderful song. Uh, thank you, Pastor Metacaro, for presenting and bringing to all of us the spectrum of the Hadvent Hill community. Um, I just feel that uh, since this is the first time our guest has ever had the opportunity to stand up here with all of us assembled together this way, I would just wish to disturb you a little further by asking the members of our host, the Adventist University of Africa, to rise up, the members of AUA who are here, uh, rise up wherever you are, let our guests be able to have a glimpse of you. I know all of you are not here, but those of you who are here represent. Those of you who are here, I think, uh, and uh, you can see a UA family. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Um, East Central Africa Division. Let me first, before you stand up, ask uh, Pastor Metacaro and his wife, Winfrida, to stand up and uh, greet us, greet the guests. Thank you very much, Pastor. Pastor Metacaro is the executive secretary of the division, and he's the one who stood up first and made us feel at home. Our CFO is uh, Elder Jerome Abimana, with his dear wife, Eugenie. Yesterday they taught me how to pronounce that name. I have always thought I knew how to pronounce it, but Yes, and they say no. But anyway, uh, rise up, Elder Jerome, and your dear wife, and uh, greet everyone. Thank you very much. OK, uh, I'm Pastor Uguri, as you heard. I also have a wife, and uh, she's seated up front here. Uh, Mama Uguri, would you mind to rise up? And because you're a little short, just come forward here and <laughs> let the family of God see you. Would you like to say hi? Well, I was almost to say happy Sabbath. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Yeah, she, she's a lady of few ones, and uh, what's happening now? I was almost to leave. Oh. Uh, stand with me for a little while, but move a little further so that you don't be, you, don't <laughs> you know, she can easily start pushing me, and then uh, I get confused. Yeah, but when she's standing there, I feel much warmer. By the way, many of you have not met her. She's a very sweet person with a very sweet heart and spirit. If you want to interact with the Mama Elizabeth Ruguri, you will find a, a very, very welcoming person. Right? OK, then now let's have the whole ECD family rise up. Those of you from ECD family who are here, kindly rise up. Let's do it quickly so that we don't kill time. Yes, our guests, this is uh, ECD family. I see Brother Jonathan waving us uh, from far right at the back there. You wave, you wave ECD, wave. Of course, ECD with all its subsidiary organizations like the media and everybody else. Thank you very much. It's too many. I can't really begin introducing everyone by name. Have mercy on me on that one. Sit down, okay? 
Maxwell Adventist Academy, MAA. That's how I call you these days. MAA. It's you. Nothing has changed. All right. Maxwell Adventist Academy. Oh my. Oh my. How beautiful. How beautiful. Man, you look like you are the majority here. This is powerful. Yeah, it's, it's a old school. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Danda and the team uh, and faculty and staff of Maxwell Adventist Academy. Please maintain this beauty. Maintain this beauty. It is amazing how you look. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Hadvent Hill Primary School. Hadvent Hill Primary School. Uh, wherever you are, our teachers and our students and staff, everybody. Yeah, you are not few too. I am not sure who is more than the other. I think you 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 compete very sharply between you, Maxwell, and uh, yourselves. Uh, thank you very much, Advent Hill Primary School. You look brilliant, uh, sharp young guys here. And I know you have been longing for this day to see someone whom you have not met before. You stand here for a number of minutes, and I can assure you, you can admire him as much as you want. Thank you very much. Your time will come when you can sing. Huh? Oh. Mama is tired, and she wants to leave. Can you allow me to allow her to leave? All right, Mama. I understand. Uh, Adra, Africa, are you here? Adra, Africa? Yes, 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 you're there. All right, Adra, Africa is there. Not very many. These are traveling uh, people because they travel the continent, so from time to time, many of them are not at home here. But you represent the office, and we are very happy to have you with us. Thank you very much. Um, Maranatha Volunteers International. Any member of Maranatha here this morning? They are also traveling people. Wow, no, quite a number of you are here. Thank you very much, Maranatha Volunteer International. Uh, can you wave? Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, and thank you very much for your ministry. Uh, these are guys who go around assisting, building schools, and building churches, and in digging wells of water to communities that need those services. We totally admire what you do. Uh, thank you very much. Um, we have a new entity in the camp on the campus, uh, um, bicycle mission to the world. Uh, any member of BMW who is here? Okay. The other day we officially opened their mission center somewhere that side. And if you happen to be walking that side, you will see a very beautiful masterpiece of a structure. And you will not need to ask, what is this? Because even the writing on the front of the building will speak to you. It is not the normal Roman alphabet we know. And it's another one. That is Korean uh, kind of writing. Did I see even one? Not yet. After finishing uh, opening the building, I think they have gone out for mission. That is them. Okay, whom have I left? Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. JICAS, General Conference, Auditing Services. Chicas, are you here? All right. Yes, yes. Quite a number of you, you are there. Thank you very much. Chicas, can you wave? 
so that people can see you. You are not too many. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think I have covered you. But I missed something out, which I must go back one step. Uh, I want to invite the Vice Chancellor of this university and his dear wife. Without them, we wouldn't have had the opportunity to enjoy this facility. Uh, Professor and Madam Ijeti kindly come up here again. At least your wife didn't stand here, but let people see her and see where your strength comes from. <laughs> Am I not right? Yes, sir. Yeah, Professor, this time, please say aye to the assembly, and you can allow your wife to do the same. Greetings to everyone that is assembled here. And may God bless each one of us as we listen to the presentation today. Greetings to everyone this morning. We are so glad to see each one of you here on this beautiful hall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, because of what uh, Dr. Mtekaro said at the beginning, we have a very, very tight day. Uh, we have a whole parade of events between now and uh, maybe 2, a, 2 p.m. We will be traveling from here by 2 p.m. to the airport to connect for Tanzania or to depart for, for Dar es Salaam. And so we need a little time in between here. But it is my privilege and my real privilege to do something I haven't done before in this setting. Uh, to bring to you the man of God, the leader of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and his dear wife, and it is a worldwide ministry they do. Those of you who are in school and you do geography, studies, go and check your atlas, maps, and you see what the world means. Every country you talk about, every island you talk about, uh, as far as the Seventh-day Adventist Church is concerned, Elder and Dr. Ted Wilson, is the leader. Can't you say amen? Can't you say amen? amen? To have somebody like this stop here seven, eight, and greet us is not a small matter. He's such a busy, busy leader. I sometimes wonder how and where he finds the strength to do the things he does and the way he does them. You never see his face faint because of the amount of work he has done. Yesterday we, we were in Akuru where we met a whole population of Seventh-day Adventist church members assembled together for a big, big mega meeting we had there. We had government officials and so many other kinds of people who have a way of association with the Seventh-day Adventists come. They came, all of them, there in Akuru, and we had precious time together uh, to receive the ministry the man of God brought to the people of God here in Kenya. He had just arrived from Southern Africa, Indian Ocean, uh, before coming over here. He had great, great meetings there, the, the Sabbath found him there, and uh, he will tell you what happened on that Sabbath. He has met, or he met the end of state of Zambia, Republic 
which was quite an undertaking. Visiting with the state president in any country is not uh, a soft matter. And he has gone through all that. And when he arrived here in Kenya, the first place we took him was to the state house where he met His Excellency, the president of this Republic of Kenya. And that too was quite an exercise. Uh, some of us were afraid that by yesterday he may not have sufficient strength to address the mammoth uh, multitude that was going to come to Nakuru. But he did a wonderful, wonderful ministry there in Nakuru. Everyone left feeling very blessed, very, very blessed. Uh, and Ted Wilson is the president of the General Conference. He's a man who loves education. He loves medical work. He loves I told you they help us a lot. Uh, she has an ego's high, but I will come to it. So, and Ted Wilson is the president, as I said, and he loves all these ministries. Actually, before the construction of this particular building here, I remember he came by and the, we were scouting the area, wondering where and how and when with the vice chancellor of this university at that time, Dr. Becker. And there was quite a bit of an argument uh, about the particular spot where this building needed to stand. And with this council, with this council, we all uh, settled for this particular spot. Uh, the administration of the university had a different way of looking at it, but we, at the end, ag agreed here. Now, today, when you look at this building, if you were there when, before it was built, and if you'd remember the kind of landscape this place was, I tell you, you cannot believe the great change and information this building has brought to the whole scenery of Advent, Adventist University of Africa. Uh, Dr. Ten Wilson has a very soft heart for Africa. If you just check on his face, check his face, you'll see love for Africa. The problem with you, you have eyes, but you don't see. But what can we do? It is even written in the book. People have eyes, they don't see. They have ears, they don't hear. Yeah. When he stands up here, just judge for yourself. Uh, I didn't know the secret, but talking one day, he said, you know what, Pastor? I grew up in Africa. His father was a missionary in Egypt. I don't know how old he was then. He might disclose that to you if he wants. But uh, he had a great experience in the continent of Africa. Right? So uh, he has that experience for Africa. And he ever worked in Africa as well. Uh, in the former Africa, Indian Ocean Division, before the continent of Africa was realigned into three divisions. That time there were two. So he served in the division out there in West Africa. He can tell you if he wants what he did there. Yeah. And he used to pass through Nairobi many times those years. So he has a very special love for Nairobi and uh, East Africa as well. Uh, he is a man of great experience. He has served uh, almost at all the levels of, of the church, really. He has been a pastor, a district pastor, 
Yes, I've heard him tell people he served in New York City uh, as a pastor. Maybe he served there also in the conference. He has served as a departmental director in the division. He has served as an executive secretary uh, and, and before then as an assistant executive secretary. Uh, he has been the president of a division. Uh, I'm being quick because uh, his CV is a long CV, beautiful CV. But just for your idea, he has served as uh, chairman of many associations, including the Pacific Press. Uh, he has served at the General Conference as a general vice president. Uh, and from 2010, he was elected as the General Conference president to date. A man of great, great experience. When you hear people talk about revival and reformation, about, uh, uh, you know, awareness and going back to the altar uh, that we had during the last 10 days of prayer, and many, many other projects and programs we are talking about in the church today, yeah, most of them are his own initiative, of course, with the, the group, with the team of his leaders at the General Conference. The church has never been the same uh, since God called this man of God to lead. Uh, spirituality of every place has changed to very new levels. I can say many, many, many things about our elder, but uh, because of time, I will stop there. Now, excuse me, uh, Elder Wilson, uh, I shouldn't do anything more after presenting you, but uh, right here on the hill, you allowed us to uh, provide residence for one of your staff of the General Conference, and that is uh, Dr. Samuel Lumwe. Are you here, Dr. Lumwe? Oh yeah, he is there, he is there. Yeah, Dr. Lumwe uh, works with the General Conference uh, in the area of, <laughs> uh, what is that portfolio, Dr. Lumwe? I keep confusing it with the, yes. Yes, Adventist Muslim relations. And I'm happy you are based here, Dr. Luma, because this division has picked a new level of doing things for Muslims. We don't shout this too much, but probably this is the one division that is reaching out to Muslims in a bigger scale than any other, baptizing as many as you may probably not want to talk about. It's a, it's a totally new experience for all of us, and Dr. Lumwe is all over this division, assisting with the unions who are doing marvelous work in that AMR ministry. Thank you very much, Dr. Lumwe, for accepting to stay and live with us here. Okay, then we have another very, very important past person, a great, great friend of mine. Uh, he saw me grow in this ministry, and uh, he has really been like a, a, a patriarch of the church in the Eastern Africa region. Pastor Solomon Wode Andreas. Uh, if you rise up, Pastor, you know how shy I feel uh, to ask you to stand up, but the Lord has done marvelous things for you. You, you have kept your strength. And I, I, one time he came to, off to my office to anoint him before he dies. And I brought a bottle of oil. <laughs> I put together a few friends, but I told him, Pastor, 
I don't, I'm not anointing you to die. I am anointing you to live. Then he started telling me, oh, no, pastor, I have accepted what the doctor has told me. I said, pastor, I don't care what the doctors have told you. Listen to what I'm telling you. And he said, amen. And we anointed him, four of us. And I told him to forget completely about death. That's many years ago. Look at him today. <laughs> he, looks, he looks younger younger than many of us here. And very strong, very, very clear mind. Uh, Pastor Solomon is the president of uh, Eritrea uh, Attached Field uh, out there at the Horn of Africa. A country that has gone through interesting experiences. It's a country we have not visited for many years as a division, and yet it was one country I used to visit almost every month. Beautiful country, beautiful people, loving people. Uh, but we haven't been able to go to Eritrea. Pastor Solomon also, in his age, can tell you he's not a young man. Uh, I don't remember whether he remembers his age himself, but he should be over 90 or about 90. So he, he is here and he came also purposely to be able to meet our world leader of the church. They know each other. They know each other for many, many years. So, Pastor, I believe you will have a chance to shake his hand as you requested. So, let me stop there. And at this time, invite Pastor Ted Wilson, or Elder Ted Wilson, uh, and his wife, so they can stand here together. He will excuse his wife at a certain point after she has greeted us, and you have heard our voice. Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Jumbo, Abari, and uh, Pastor Ruguri, uh, Karibu sana muze mku. <laughs> if I have mispronounced the Swahili, I say to you, Samahani. What a privilege to be here with you on Advent Hill. Extraordinary. And I'm going to share a few thoughts before we look at the Word of God. Uh, and a challenge to each of you to be the kinds of leaders that God intends for the East Central Africa Division region. But before we do that, I'm going to ask my dear wife, Nancy, to share a few words with you. Uh, she travels with me all over the world. She absorbs lots of information. She has many perceptions about things, but the greatest asset of my wife in addition to her great love for the Word of God and the spirit of prophecy and a relationship with the Lord, her next greatest asset is she loves people. And uh, I'm sure she could spend the rest of the day talking with many of you. But Nancy, if you would just share a few words of encouragement. It's really wonderful to be here. But I have just, I'm gonna be talking to the students I have such fond memories of my days in school, and I never wanted to finish university because I enjoyed the fellowship, the friendship, the classes, and I just want to implore you, enjoy these days where you spend all day with your friends, where you do creative, fun things. You get to sing in choirs. It was beautiful. Thank you so much. You get to plan programs and take part in them. I remember in grade school, all the fun things we would do getting ready for a program. And hopefully you still have recess where you go out and you get to play. But so appreciate these years. But more than any, anything, I want to leave this with you. You may think you know who your best friend is. But really, your best friend is Jesus. 
You can tell him anything when you've been really bad, when you've really been bad. He wants to hear from you. He cares. He loves you no matter what you do. He loves you unconditionally. And he wants to save you from pain and hurt and disappointment. So when you're excited, he wants to hear from you. When you're sad, you can tell him anything. He keeps secrets. And he wants to help you. He, wants, he has a plan for every one of you. And I can tell you for sure, it's very different than the plan you have yourself for yourself. Um, if you're like I was. I had my life all planned. It's very different, and it's much more wonderful than I had planned. So know that no matter what you do, I mean that, no matter what. He loves you, he wants to hear your voice, and he will speak to you through his word. And there's so many wonderful promises. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will forgive you from whatever and he loves you with an everlasting love, just like the choir sang. So get to know Jesus, and he will bring you peace and joy and happiness and an abundant life that you will get from no one else. So just remember that. He loves you. He wants you to be happy and have fun, but he's your best friend. So talk to him every day. Um, tell him about everything, and he'll speak to you. And enjoy these years. Thank you, Well, I think she's given you good counsel. Probably I can just sit down and we can conclude. <laughs> but I want to express deep appreciation to all of you for being here. Amazing love, how can it be that God would send his, his son for me and for you? Thank you, Maxwell Adventist Academy, for that beautiful rendition. And I slipped out of my chair. Some of you didn't see me probably, but I, I got you on video, so I'm going to show it to the world, and they'll hear you on the official Facebook page. Thank you for what you are doing through the power of music. And what a privilege to be in a group that covers such an extensive array of God's precious services and organizations in the East Central Africa Division. It's amazing to see leaders from each area from the division office itself here on Advent Hill, uh, the Adventist University of Af Africa. And thank you, Pastor and Mrs. Njeti, for your warm welcome and for being with us, uh, Dr. Njeti, in Na Nakuru yesterday. Many people traveled three, four hours to go and come back. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate that. And thank you for the hospitality here. Uh, we have Maranatha with us, Adra with us, BMW with us, GCAS, AMR Adventist, Muslim Relations. Thank you, Samuel, for your presence and, and the, what is being done to try and help people. Uh, Maxwell Academy and the Advent Hill Primary School. What an amazing array of individuals, ADRA organization and so many others that develop relationships with people, helping them to know the Savior who is coming very soon. In fact, the Maranatha Volunteers International Organization, the word Maranatha means Jesus is coming, the second Advent. In our name, Seventh-day Adventists. Some people may not know what's this Adventist thing. It comes from the word Advent, which means coming. And so Jesus came the first time, the first Advent. 
and we're looking for the second advent. And let me tell you, young friends and all of my colleagues here, it will be soon. In fact, in Revelation 22, uh, John quotes Jesus three times, verses 7, 12, and 20, saying, I am coming quickly. And what a privilege it is for each of us to be part of that proclamation of the three angels' messages of Revelation 14, 6 through 12, Revelation 18, 1 through 4, the fourth angel, calling people out of Babylon, out of confusion, telling them to stay away from that which will be the mark of the beast, which is obeying through your mind and through your actions that which is not found in the word of God. That's why the seventh-day Sabbath is so important. The seventh-day Sabbath is the seal of God on his people and has been throughout history. So what a privilege it is to, to be here with you and to spend a little time. Thank you, Pastor Mitakaro, for your welcome you and your wife who have welcomed us here. Uh, being with Pastor Raguri and his wife Elizabeth is a great privilege at all times in so many ways. We have a very close working relationship. We have very similar thoughts on so many things. We, we believe in the Lord's imminent return and it's just a great privilege to be here in the East Central Africa Division. Uh, we will be going to Tanzania, uh, where Pastor Mitakaro originates. We'll be going there this afternoon, as has been mentioned. We'll be there for a couple days. It'll be a great privilege to be there. And Pastor and Mrs. Uh, Habimana, wonderful to work with you folks, too. Uh, my, my friend Jerome, he and I practice our French together, and uh, it's a good opportunity to, to discuss some something in a different language. And so many of you who are here, Pastor Solomon, thank you for being here, 90 years old. What an amazing achievement by God's grace. And uh, we thank you for your strong involvement in this division down through the decades. So we honor you for your, for your gray hair. At least you have hair. I don't have much hair left, but uh, you truly are in the Swahili, which you do not speak in Ethiopia, really, but you really are uh, the true Muzei. And we thank you for your, your wonderful connection. I see others here who are wonderful friends within the university and the division. And uh, Pastor Paul, you have been such a blessing to Adventist Possibility Ministries. Just this morning, I received an email from your good friend, Larry Evans, who is now retired from Adventist Possibility Ministries. And uh, he was singing your praises and thanking you for being a mentor to him. So we, we praise God for your involvement. And uh, Pastor Mahuni, uh, we've known each other a long time. We held an evangelistic meeting in Likasi in uh, Congo down in the southeastern part of Congo many years ago. And uh, it was a great privilege to, to preach God's word there. I can still remember the uh, theme song that we sang, part of it at least. And I know it, of course, in English. Uh, and we would sing it uh, in Swahili. Lo kisu aja busi kuzuri si kusita sao. What what a what a privilege. What a privilege to tell people that heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Because that's what the purpose of AUA and ECD and ADRA, AAMR, Maxwell, uh, GCAS, all of these entities, and the primary school. Wonderful to see you folks here. Thank you for being here. You really look smart. I like the way you look. Yes, let's give them a hand. And academy students are so grateful for you too. 
marvelous. Um, but the reason is why we're here is to proclaim that Jesus can enter your heart and take control, and you can be a witness. I have to tell you, I am so proud of ECD. ECD has taken total member involvement to a level that I have to tell you, uh, kind of quietly, I don't want any other division to feel offended. We have wonderful divisions around the world, wonderful leaders, wonderful focus on mission. But ECD has taken total member involvement, TMI, to a level like never seen before. Everybody being involved in evangelism, all the lay people uh, with their energy and their zeal and their connection with the Lord, witnessing to other people. And the amazing uh, vote that was taken recently in the year-end meeting of ECD to double the membership within this quinquennium, I mean, I, it can happen. God can bless, absolutely. You are the largest division in the entire world, membership-wise. There is no other division larger. You have about five million members. And young people, that may not mean a lot to you, but I want to tell you, you belong to a vibrant, wonderful Seventh-day Adventist family in East Central Africa. Appreciate it and praise God for it. And uh, they have a special impact 2025, which they are focusing on, Pastor Rigori, and, and your officers and all the departments. We praise God for that. Uh, it, it's, you know, actually, we need to be praying earnestly for the falling of the latter reign of the Holy Spirit. Because when that latter rain comes, the work will go so quickly. We will be amazed and we will say, well, that wasn't because of any action that the general conference took or the division or the unions or the local field. That was because of God's intervention. And what a powerful witness that will be. Well, I have a message for you this morning. When we entered into this beautiful building, and what an impressive building it is, full of good technology. And I was watching whoever is doing the audiovisual and media up in the upper area or back here, you're doing a great job. I saw how they were taking the cameras and uh, showing different things. The color is superb. Uh, I'm sure you may be using it for some other purpose, maybe uh, somehow reaching other people. Uh, but this building is absolutely lovely. It's a good place for you to meet as a huge group of the family of Advent Hill. I want to urge you, even though you may not meet like this very often, I want to urge you to truly be together as a family, united in Christ. We sang that at the beginning. Thank you, ladies, for leading us in the song service. United in Christ. We have this hope. United in the Lord. What an opportunity to be united on Advent Hill. Never let divisions come in. Never let uh, distractions and separations and some kind of uh, difficult situation develop amongst you. Let there be harmony between all these entities. And then you will speak volumes to the community. Those people up on Advent Hill, they are united for one purpose, to glorify God and warn and tell of the hope of Jesus soon coming. What a privilege for you to be part of Advent Hill. Nancy and I are on uh, quite an extensive tour, an itinerary. We've been on the continent now for about 11 days, I suppose. That didn't count exactly. Uh, we landed in Lusaka, coming by Ethiopian Airlines, from Dulles Airport to Addis, from Addis to Harare, and transiting on to Lusaka. We spent a number of days in the great country of Zambia. Our church there is exploding, just like in many ways here in Kenya. In fact, the membership is almost the same, a little more in Zambia, 
They have about 1.2, 1.3 million members in Zambia. And we had a wonderful time with them. Last Sabbath, just today is Tuesday, just Sabbath, we met in the giant National Heroes Stadium in Lusaka. It seats about 60,000 people. In my estimation, there were about 50,000 Seventh-day Adventists in that great stadium. It was a marvelous time, and the president of the country was with us, uh, His Excellency President Hichilema and his wife. And both of them are very active, dedicated Seventh-day Adventists. What a privilege it was to be with our members and to be part of it. And then we flew uh, here on Sunday to be with ECD, and we are taking a trip through uh, Kenya, Tanzania this afternoon, and then on Friday we will be going to the large, vast country of the Democratic Republic of Congo, which used to be part of the old Africa Indian Ocean Division, and that's why I'm very familiar with Congo, or as it was known, Zaire, for many years. Uh, it'll be a great privilege. Upon our arrival here, as Pastor Aguri said, we had the privilege of meeting uh, His Excellency President Ruto. What an experience that was. You know, normally we meet in some ornate room uh, with lots of history, lots of protocol, but this is the first time in my memory, and I've met with many different heads of state, government officials, dignitaries, etc. But they had planned a beautiful meeting for us in the vast, beautiful gardens of the State House. And we met out in these gardens in a semicircle, chairs positioned, facing State House. The sun had set enough so the heavy sun was not on us, it was being shielded by the trees, and we had such a pleasant time with the president of this country. He knows Adventists well, he appreciates Adventists. I was able to share with him Bible texts for his encouragement, wisdom that he needs, guidance, and something to count on in all of the decisions he makes, and I was able to pray for him. He, he was very relaxed as we went into our uh, time together. And it was a lovely opportunity to witness for Jesus. And all of you have that opportunity to witness for others. Yesterday we had a wonderful time in Nakuru. Uh, we flew, most of you drove who went there. We had the privilege of flying in a helicopter from right up here on the top of Advent Hill. In fact, uh, a few of you who were there, you, you stopped. Uh, there were a couple who were jogging or exercising. They stopped and others, you know, and to see this special mechanical bird fly into the air. And it only took us maybe about 40, 45 minutes, whereas it took many of you about three or four hours to drive. But as I passed over the country of Kenya, I saw that God is blessing, that uh, it's, be, it's being blessed in a prosperous way, even though you have many challenges. I recognize that. I do want to pray at the end for rain. You need rain. We've already prayed publicly for rain. And we pray that the Lord will supply that because the cattle need it, the people need it, the country needs it. And the East African community needs it. But we had a marvelous time in Nakuru, representatives from many different places, about 6,000 people in a stadium area. Uh, and that was on a Monday. Can you imagine if we had had it on a Sabbath? How many people could have been there? But what a privilege to be here with you in Kenya as you proclaim the three angels' messages, lifting up Christ and his righteousness, 
his justifying righteousness, his sanctifying righteousness, not our own righteousness. We have no righteousness. We are completely indebted to Jesus, just as Maxwell Adventist Academy Choir sang. Amazing love that God has for us. Now, in the aspect of your service for God, as we entered this beautiful building, as you look straight ahead, it's on the back side of where the audiovisual and media people are, in that lobby, there is a focal point with the emblem of Adventist University of Africa, and there is a slogan underneath. And that amazing slogan is something which gives everyone who enters a tremendous understanding of what AUA and Advent Hill and the East Central Africa Division and all of the entities here in Advent Hill, it gives an understanding as to what you are to do. I don't care whether you're in education, whether you're in auditing, whether you're in administration, in departmental work, in teaching, in health services, whatever it is, on Advent Hill, you have a unique mission. And it is summarized in what is stated as you enter this beautiful hall. If you haven't noticed it recently, when you leave, I want you to look at it. It says, Adventist University of Africa, developing leaders for service. And in a sense, Pastor Reguri, all of you, regardless of what entity, that is your purpose. This is the highest level, if we can use that term, we're all equal at the foot of the cross, but this is the highest level, the highest echelon of leadership for the East Central Africa Division. You are not only to accomplish your work, you are to mentor and help other people developing leadership for service. Service to God, service to his church, service to the community, service to the country, yes, service to the globe. Advent Hill, developing leaders for service. In the scripture, there is a, an amazing story about one of the great leaders in history. His name was Moses. And I like to tell Pastor Mitikaro his name, Musa, is really Moses. In fact, that name, I grew up in Cairo, Egypt, in Heliopolis. I love the Middle East. It's my home. Uh, Nancy maybe gets, gets tired of me talking about Egypt and my memories of being a child growing up there. I knew nothing about the world except Egypt. That was a basically it. And just the region in the Mediterranean area. I still consider it my home. The food, the culture, uh, everything about it. It just makes me feel happy when I think about it. But we had uh, someone there, different people, especially uh, from the African area. Uh, and there was one man named Musa. And that has stuck in my mind since tiny, tiny child. Musa, Moses. When you look in Exodus uh, chapter 3, you know all the story about Moses growing up as the son of Pharaoh, grandson of Pharaoh, actually. And he was intended to become the leader of Egypt. The history of Egypt is very amazing and very powerful. You go to the Valley of the Kings, you go to Luxor, you go to some of these places where uh, pharaohs were buried, honored. Moses could have been there. 
But God had another plan. God has a plan for every one of you, especially young people. He wants to use you in a powerful way. He wants to use each of you as leaders on Advent Hill in a powerful way. But, as my wife Nancy mentioned, your plans for giving great leadership may be different from what God intends. Don't ever feel hesitant about what God is doing to change the course of your lives in terms of leadership and developing other leaders for service. Moses became a great leader in Egypt, and then you know the story of how he escaped because he killed an Egyptian, and in fact, he did it because he was trying to help his own ethnic group, the Israelites. They reported to the people, and he was very afraid, and he ran. He went into the desert. He went into Midian, into the Sinai area, into very deserted parts of that region. He had to unlearn everything he had learned the first 40 years. And God took him to an unusual place. It says in verse 1 of Exodus 3, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. You see, uh, Moses had shown kindness to the many daughters of Jethro, and he had helped to feed them and water the flocks. In verse 17 of chapter 2, it says, Then the shepherds came and drove them away, these, these ladies that were trying to get some water, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Even though you're facing almost a drought, it is a drought, God is asking you to water the flock, water the lives of people. And in response to this kindness that Moses showed to the daughters of Jethro, uh, Jethro gave him one of his daughters. Uh, it, was, it was an amazing understanding of how God works. Uh, what a beautiful gift, because you've shown kindness. So Moses was learning all kinds of things in the desert. He was understanding how to become a humble leader, undoing all of the things of the royal court of Pharaoh, because God has other ways to show leadership. Humble, simple, careful leadership non-partial, balanced leadership. My dear friends, Africa has many wonderful things, including tribal customs and culture, which is unparalleled in the western part of the world. Never lose the beautiful things you have of your tribal cultural experience, showing respect, understanding that you are part of a community and not just one person. But also, tribal situations can divide. I urge all of you to understand that you need to be as humble as possible in deferring to other people. Others, not only here in Africa, but coming from different parts of the world, always show deference and love for others. That's one of the key qualities of developing leaders for service. Well, as Moses was unlearning all of these things, uh, he uh, was tending the flocks. Now, I don't know about you. I, some of you come from areas where in your past, as you were growing up, you were tending flocks. As we were flying over in the helicopter yesterday, I saw many corrals where cattle were kept. We saw a lot of cattle. It's a very tedious, careful, important work, but also can be very boring at times. 
because all you're doing is looking at animals. I guess you can talk to the animals and uh, some of them understand you, uh, but it is a bit boring. But Moses was learning some principles, principles of humility, principles of waiting on the Lord for his purposes, not your own ideals and purposes. As God had led Moses to learn this humility, and Moses was one of the most humble leaders on the face of the earth. After having been a pompous, self-centered leader, he became one of the humblest leaders all through the power of God. And I want to urge all of you, doesn't matter what job you hold, doesn't matter if you're president of the general conference, president of this or that, or departmental leader, whatever, we are all to serve with humility. As servants, Jesus said, if you want to be the highest, you need to be a servant. And that is truly what developing leaders for service is all about. So here's Moses out in the desert. And I have to tell you, Nancy knows this, I, I love verdant green areas, forests and all of that. I love that. But I also love the desert. There's something very unusual about the desert. And so here's Moses out in the desert and he is taking care of these sheep and he comes uh, to the back of the desert to Horeb, the mountain of God. All of a sudden, something happens. The angel of the Lord, verse 2, appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. The amazing thing about the bush was, as the Bible says, he looked and behold, the bush was burning without fire, or with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Now, in these very uh, drought-trending settings right now, if you were to take a match and try to light some of the area uh, straw and ground cover, it would easily begin to burn and burn up. But this bush did not burn. That was amazing. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. I have to tell you um, that in St. Catherine's Monastery, which is at the base, the foot of Mount Sinai, it is a Christian monastery in a land of Islamic belief. Uh, there is uh, an interesting aspect about St. Catherine's Monastery. If you visit the monastery, and I did when I was a small boy, I have visited Mount Sinai since that time, but as a small boy, my father took me to Mount Sinai, had an amazing time climbing up the mountain which we think is more the mountain that depicts where Moses went because of what scripture says and the spirit of prophecy rather than the traditional mountain. But as we stayed there in St. Catharines, you, you were allowed to stay in the little rooms. You had to bring your own food. I can remember some visitors came. They didn't have any food, so the, the monks would have to give them some figs and whatever food they had. But we brought our own food, and then they took us on a tour of the monastery and you go to a certain portion of this monastery and you will find um, bones, rooms full of bones, uh, leg bones over here and arm bones and skulls over here. These are the remnants of monks who have lived there for centuries died, of course, they didn't live for centuries, but they died. They were then uncovered from the earth and their remains were put in these rooms as kind of a special honor. 
And if you were an especially important monk, they would put the bones back together and I saw one or two that were dressed with their uh, vestments and their, uh, their clothes, just skeletons with these clothes on. Very strange looking place. But then you come to another place in St. Catharines and there on a wall is a huge bush growing. And those in the monastery will tell you, which I don't believe, but in any case, that's part of their tradition and history. This is the very burning bush of Moses. Well, whether it was the bush or not, it happened in that area. And this bush did not burn, which was an absolute miracle of God. God saw in verse 4 that he turned aside to look. I want to tell you, my friends, as leaders on Advent Hill, when you see something dramatic that God is doing, don't ignore it. Turn aside and look. You will learn something. And you will then be able to pass it on as you develop leaders for service. The Lord called to Moses, 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 and he said, here, I'm, here I am. Maybe he said, Musa, Musa. I'm not sure what language they were using. <clears throat> then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Why was it holy ground? Because the great I am was there. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And then it says here, the Lord says, I have seen the oppression of my people. I know their sorrows. I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. And God called him, verse 10, come now therefore and I will send you to Pharaoh and you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And the next verse tells us Moses had learned his lesson in the desert university of Midian. He had understood what it meant to truly be a leader. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. Sometimes when you're placed in leadership, you wonder, Lord, how, how can I accomplish this work? I, I don't have everything I need to know. Uh, I want to tell you, lean on the Lord, for the next verse tells you exactly what God can do to help you develop leaders for service and your own life. I will certainly be with you. Here on Advent Hill, never forsake or ignore the idea that, well, God is not here. No, God is here with you. His presence in your own personal life, in your academic activities, in your administrative, departmental, whatever it is, service activities, God will be with you. Well, <laughs> Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, what is his name? You have to remember the children of Israel had been refugees in Egypt for about 400 years. They had lost sight of who the true God was. Just as today, and that's why God is calling us through the three angels' messages to turn people back to the true worship of God, not a false worship, not a worship that is mixing in a uh, syncretistic way uh, tradition and some truth, but a lot of humanism and pomp and personal activity. No, God is calling us back to the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And that is your job as leaders on Advent Hill. The Israelites had forgotten so much of how God had led and provided for them when Jacob came with his 11 sons 
to bow before Joseph, their brother, not knowing that it was Joseph when the, his brothers came in fulfillment of that dream, the two dreams that Joseph had shared. Who, 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 should I, who should I say is the God? What shall I say to them? Then God said something absolutely amazing. God said to Moses, verse 14, Genesis, uh, Exodus chapter 3, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. A few years ago, Nancy and I had the privilege of going up Mount Sinai for me again, for Nancy the first time. We started out very early in the morning, about one or two o'clock, and some of you may have been there. You may have done the same climb, and we climbed up to the top of Mount Sinai in order to see the sunrise, and we did some special video work up there. I want to tell you it was such a thrill to see that place, to understand what God had done for his people. Jesus said in John 8, verse 58, Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you before Abraham was, I am. In Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, page 260. And I hope that you as leaders, as you develop leaders for service for the future, Dr. Njeti and your team and all of you on Advent Hill, that you will be great believers, first of all, in the mighty Word of God. This is the written Word leading us to the living Word, Jesus Christ. But that you will also be very ardent promoters readers, enactors of the instruction in the spirit of prophecy, one of God's greatest gifts to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And in Testimonies, volume 9, page 260, it says, I have been shown that human instrumentalities are liable to seek after too much power and try to control the work themselves. Be careful, leaders, young people, don't try and pull all the power to yourself because you're not the source of power. Goes on to say, no one should for a moment fancy or think that he is able to manage those things that belong to the great I am. I am. In Desire of Ages, the finest book written on the life of Jesus Christ. It says on pages 24 and 25, by his humanity, Christ touched humanity. By his divinity, he lays hold upon the throne of God. As the Son of Man gave us an example of obedience as the Son of God, he gives us power to obey. It was Christ who from the bush on Mount Horeb spoke to Moses saying, I am that I am. Goes on to say, he says to us, I am the good shepherd. I am the living bread. I am the way, the truth, and the life. All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. I am the assurance of every promise. I am be not afraid. So my dear leaders here on Advent Hill, collection of the finest that God has in the East Central Africa Division. Understand that as you develop leaders for service, whether it's in the division, the university, or in all the other aspects of this wonderful Advent Hill, always remember to turn your eyes upon Jesus, who is the great I am, who is the one who will lead us home. 
the one who will give you wisdom and understanding, the one who will come to take us home very soon. In fact, it's significant, and I'm not sure whether I know of any other place within Adventism around the world where we have such a major concentration of people in a location called Advent Hill. Because truly, you, all of you, must be looking for the second Advent. It's coming soon. So, in closing, who will lead us into the uncertain days ahead? I am. Who will strengthen you and encourage you in your work here on Advent Hill? I am. Who will open the way for accomplishments in total member involvement in saying, yes, Lord, I will go. I will be part of the last proclamation. I will be part of impact, ECD Impact 2025. Who will do that to open the way to accomplish this? I am. Who will help you one day in your work along the way, in your home, in your life, in your testimony, in your witness, in your training others to look to the Lord's soon coming and to provide service to him and to the world? Who will help you? The great I am. Let me pray with you. Would you stand, please? Father in heaven, we have a wonderful group here representing so many aspects of Advent Hill. Each one is important. Each one has a place in your work. Help us to humble ourselves before you every day. Help us to learn that it is not from our offices or from our classrooms or from our actions that everything will take place in such and such an order, but it is to come from the instructions of the great I am. Lord, I place this Advent Hill family in your hands. Now guide us as we look forward to Jesus soon coming and of all places may Advent Hill be the foremost in proclaiming the second coming of Jesus Christ Lord I ask that you will be with each of the entities that are here on Advent Hill the division the university the academy the primary school ADRA Maranatha, Bicycle Mission Worldwide to the World, GCAS, AMR, and so many others. I ask that you will come close to each one and help them to feel your presence, just as you came to Moses in that burning bush. Help each of us to look, to come, to listen, to show respect, and then to go forward saying, yes, Lord, I will go. I will be filled with the power of heaven because I represent I am. Lord, bless this group in a special way. And Lord, before we end this prayer, I earnestly pray that you as the great I am will look with kindness upon East Africa, that you will send rain abundantly in an appropriate measure so there is not enormous flooding but that there is a beautiful rising of the water table here. Please send rain in the near future. And send holy rain into our hearts so that we might truly help to develop leaders for service in your service, the great I am. Thank you for hearing us. And in the name of our creator, our master teacher, master physician, our redeemer, our great high priest, our coming king, and our best friend, Jesus Christ, amen.
Please be seated. Those uh, clubs are very energizing and very, very inspiring. I think uh, all of you will join me to thank our world leader for the timely message, which resonates very well with the, the songs that were presented uh, the song we sang together, the song Maxwell Academy gave us, all focusing on the subject of the second coming of our Lord, which is truly very soon. I think this message begs for all of us to think very, very carefully. And uh, Wilson, as you see, all these are missionary establishments. Maxwell Academy, whether you know it or not, you are here as a mission school. Our teachers need to register that in their minds and in their hearts. Our students must remember that they are learning in a missionary school. Time may have made this look a little diluted, but I want you to know that the purpose for which Maxwell was established was none other than mission. And you need to shine towards that direction. Uh, ECD, no different, no difference. AUA, you're here for no other purpose apart from training leaders in mission. So many times we lose the focus and think that we are only here for academics. And there's nothing wrong with academics. We have to be relevant in the world, but don't think that is the core purpose of even Adventist University of Africa. What about the division itself? No single difference. Don't think that uh, this division was created here to give people jobs. No, we are not an organization of employment. We are an establishment that will drive mission in this territory of the East Central Africa Division. 11 Three, beautiful countries Nine. of East and Central Seven. Africa. Eight. What about you, Advent Hill? I suppose you know why you exist. I think one of these days we all need to visit one another and be able to read the mission statements that I am sure you have posted somewhere strategic where every visitor can see when they come. If you don't have one for yourself, you need to go and write one that clearly says what you exist for. It's nothing as important as mission statement. Hadra must have their own 
Jikas must have their own, and everybody must have their own. Uh, it's very, very important to focus. General Conference has come up with the, another wonderful initiative, and the Pastor Wilson, I will tell you, we are thinking very keenly on this uh, theme, or this drive of mission refocus. Mission refocus. I have adopted it for myself. Even though it's, it's a statement that calls all world divisions to sit down and reconsider setting aside some of its resources to do mission in some unentered territory somewhere in the world, outside their own division. Hmm. Dr. Njeti, I might come to you with that challenge for AUA also to consider. Since you are here with us, uh, we need to share with you the vision. What about you, Maxwell Academy, uh, Advent Hill? Don't just be there for yourselves. That is what missionary focus is about. We have to prepare everyone for this serious mission of this uh, message of the, the, the second coming of our Lord. Uh, I'm a very sensitive person in terms of finances, but don't keep money too long as if you'll be here forever. None of us will be here forever, whether as an individual person or even as an, an, an organization. And, and we'll share with you the links that have been shared with us by the General Conference of many, many uh, places in this world who need very desperately to be reached so they can also have this hope we have. Yeah, so this to me is such an opportunity God has given to us. It was not just a, a visit. I think the world leader is going around this world. I can, if you allow me, Pastor Ted Wilson, let me use this word I like using. It's like you are going around screaming to every here that can hear that we need an awakening in our lives, in our institutions. We must remember why we exist. It's not just for any other reason but for mission. Join me again to give a clap to our leader to say thank you very much. I'm teasing, teasing them a bit with the Kiswahili again. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, Pastor, to again uh, ask this family, Advent Hill family, uh, to have a look at you. These are not people who have seen you so much. If there was one place where you needed to go around like you did yesterday in Akuru, uh, and I don't know how we'll do that, but... Look at these young people who find a lot of inspiration just from seeing your faces. Uh, many of them for the first time, apart from videos and uh, online uh, images, they probably never thought that one day you come so close to them. If we had time, I will take you to Advent Hill Primary School and, and enter into their classrooms. Yeah, Maxwell Academy. They only hear. Am I, am I right, Mrs. Saribio? They only hear of you, Mrs. Saribio, and many others. You know, 
I will tell you, he's so busy. I, he moves with his office. In his devices, he's preparing sermons, he's preparing speeches, he's preparing presentations for so many places in this world. And so it's not that we are mean, that we don't bring him over to you so that he can, he could come and uh, enjoy lunch in your cafeteria and sit on one table with some of you students and that would have been the best day in your lives. Am I, am I right? <laughs> yes, but unfortunately, uh, he may not have that luxury of time. You will excuse him after here so he can go and uh, organize himself be able to disperse some of the things he, he needs to uh, before we can end for the airport in readiness to fly to Dar es Salaam, where people are again waiting for him there. So, elders, it's not that I was uh, being insensitive, uh, making you stand up here again. I know how much these people have longed to see your face, uh, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy, for Nancy's face. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Uh, maybe. Now, we have a culture they taught us at the general conference. We, we had to free our hands. He calls me by my first name, Blasius. So sometimes here in Africa, you may say, ah, what is happening there? No. It took me a long time for me to start calling him Ted. I, I, I told him, let others do it, but from my African context, there's no way I can call you by your first name. But he said, no, bless us. Let's make life easy. We are brothers and we are colleagues in mission. But don't call him Ted. Just call him Elder Wilson. For Africa, for younger people like you, you need that. I'm young myself, but not not your age. <laughs> so, Pastor, I don't know how you want to bid them farewell. Uh, just as I, I wanted you just to say a word before you, you let them go. Well, we are on quite a busy schedule, and uh, according to some changes in plans, we will leave Advent Hill at 2 o'clock this afternoon the airport in order to make sure we get to Tanzania. So we do not have a lot of time to move around. Uh, I, I know Advent Hill pretty well. I've been here many times, but not particularly when you have been here necessarily. But we do want to give you our deepest love and Christian greetings. Um, not sure how we will exit here, but we certainly maybe can walk close to you and come around and at least wave at you and encourage you in the wonderful journey with the Lord as you lean on him as Moses did and realize that Jesus, as my wife said, the relationship with Jesus is the most important thing in your life. That the great I am is to control your life, your direction your instruction to others, your activities. God can truly use you. So I'm not sure, Pastor, if you want to have a, some closing remarks, uh, instructions or anything, or a closing prayer. If not, Nancy and I can certainly just take three minutes or whatever it takes to walk through here and just to look you much closer in the eye in order to make sure that you know that you're part of God's great worldwide family. Thank you to all of you for spending this time this morning with us. And never forget, Advent Hill, East Central Africa Division, Adventist University of Africa, which is a general conference institution. Yeah. That's a very unique situation. Well, ECD is a general conference institution. It's a division of the general conference. So you're all part of a great world family. Never forget it, and God will use you in a powerful way because Maranatha, Jesus is coming soon.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, before he and uh, Nancy can come over around to just come closer to you, we we are asked. We told we were told that uh, Advent Hill Primary School is prepared with a, a very beautiful song. I think you can take this time to give that song, and when you finish, we will all remain in our seats calmly, and then the leaders will the leader will come around, remain seated. And then uh, once he's through with that one, then we will exit.
Thank you so much, everyone. ECD leadership would like to express our sincere appreciation to all of you. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, after the closing prayer, we will be ushered out, and uh, our leaders, your okay, we will go in the office of the VC for a short prayer. Pastor, they need your prayer. If I can suggest, uh, you, you may want to have the closing prayer, that's fine. But when we're done, before you leave, uh, we will walk down this aisle, greet you on both sides, in the back, in the center back, come back up here and around and greet all of you, and then we'll need to move on to the uh, vice chancellor's office. But I want us to be a little closer to you. Amen. And it won't take us long, but uh, just to look at you. And uh, primary school, thank you for that beautiful challenge that you gave to us. Amen. Thank you. May I ask you, Pastor Jerome Habimana, uh, please welcome to do a closing prayer. Please stand up as uh, we pray. Precious Heavenly Father, what a wonderful morning we have spent together. We thank you because you have made it possible 
to each and every one of us to come together like this and listen to our world leader. Father in heaven, we want to pray for him as he continues to travel in this division territory and beyond. Be with him and his dear wife, Nancy. Be with all of us who are going to travel with them to Tanzania this afternoon. Continue to bless all of us abundantly. Keep us faithful as we continue to wait for your second coming so that the day you will appear in the clouds of heaven, we can all be gathered together to meet you with joy. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for, you know, keeping it here. We are so grateful that you found time to actually be part of these live proceedings. We've been bringing you, coming to you live from the regional head office of the Adventist Church here in East and Central Africa. Indeed, it's been a pleasure hosting the World uh, Church President, Elder Ted N.C. Wilson. He has been here on a tour, pastoral tour for that matter, and for the last two days, yesterday and today, we have been indeed blessed by his presence. Yesterday we were in Nakuru at the ASK showground and where he was able to meet uh, church members. I can't believe it was on a Monday and yet the whole, whole space was filled up. People who just came to one, of course, have a moment to meet the world church president, but as well listen to the word of God. And it was right there where we were reminded by Pastor Ted Wilson through his message that indeed we need to recommit ourselves and consider, uh, you know, having time with God, spending time with God so that we don't have time for uh, distractions. As he mentioned in his message that there are so many distractions around us and yet if we lose focus on Jesus, then we shall indeed not be in a good place. And so I just want to bring to your attention that uh, after today, Ted Wilson will be moving to the country of Tanzania. He's been visiting this particular region, East Central Africa, and yet, of course, we would have wished him to go to every other country because this region represents about 11 countries, but because of the tight schedule and time, it was not possible. And so during this particular pastoral visit, the countries that will benefit from uh, his uh, physical presence will be Kenya, Tanzania, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. So from Tanzania, which will be tomorrow and the day after, Pastor Ted Wilson will be moving to the Democratic Republic of Congo in Kinshasa, to be specific. Kinshasa is one of the biggest cities we have here in East Central Africa, rather in Africa, really. And so it's going to be a pleasure uh, having Pastor Ted Wilson meet the church members. And throughout this particular visit, he has been very categorical that Jesus is coming again. Indeed, he is. And as we can be able to testify from everything around us. And so as church members, we ought really to prepare like never before. Another thing that really has uh, stood out from uh, this particular visit is, uh, of course, the initiative that uh, the World Church uh, you know, president has been emphasizing on, which really is about the Great Controversy 2.0. This is an initiative where uh, the leadership is asking every member to, to rather dis distribute the book Great Controversy, at least two, three copies to a member or a non-Adventist. And uh, this will go a long way in enriching our mission as we look forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Another thing, of course, is as uh, 
uh, division here in East Central Africa, we are very committed in making sure that we reach out. And so we would want to have the numbers that we currently have doubling up in the next two or so years in what we are calling Impact 2025. That in the next two years, before 2025, we want to ask each one of you, each one of you, to reach out and at least inspire one person, one person, and bring them to Christ. So we are asking you to take, it, take that responsibility of at least going out and speaking to just one person. Of course, you can speak to more, but at least one person. And that is a strategy that the church is saying, if we all commit ourselves to bring at least one person, to lead one person to Christ, by the year 2025, our population of Adventists in this particular region will double up. Right now, we have about 5 million Adventists in East Central Africa region. So you can imagine, if all of us did our part, in just a span of a year or two, we shall have a population of not less than 10 million Adventists in East Central Africa regions. Of course, ECD is one of the leading uh, divisions of this particular church when it comes to membership. But of course, compared to where we ought to be and the population that is represented in this particular region of non-Adventists, then you realize we still have a lot of work to do because we have, like I said, 11 countries in East Central Africa region and four, five million is nothing. Kenya alone has over 50 million in terms of population. So you can imagine five million out of 50 million is still a drop in the ocean. But Christ is coming soon and before he comes, perhaps you and I need to do our part. And of course, he has given us a lot of avenues and opportunities through which we can take advantage of to reach out and speak, make sure that his word really goes out there. Of course, with the invention and the development around social media and the technology, all of us really, you have no excuse whatsoever to say that, oh, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a trained theologian, so I cannot be able to preach. No, 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 no. You have so much in your disposal. Just on social media alone, I'm sure most of you have an influence that is unmatched. So if you can make it your duty to make sure that you reach out, even through your social media platforms, I'm sure you will be able to um, do that which the church is required. Of course, as you can see behind me, a lot of movement and commotion is because we have just uh, come to a close of what has been an enriching program here at the Adventist University of Africa, where we have been hosting Pastor Ted Wilson. And right about now, I want to welcome uh, the communication director for this particular regional office, uh, who is here with me, to just give us a word or two as we wait for Pastor Ted Wilson perhaps to uh, have a moment with him. So let me welcome uh, uh, the communication director for the East Central Africa region, uh, Emmanuel Pelot. Uh, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great, very inspired. Wow. What stands out for you uh, for this pastoral visit that we've been having with Pastor Ted Wilson? Of course, we would have wished to have him more longer than today, but of course, we understand the schedule is tight and he has to keep moving. Yes. Yes. What stands out for well, you know, the, the first thing that Pastor Wilson started with, he was talking about the need for unity. For all of us as Adventists especially, to come together from all of our institutions, all of our organizations, to work closely together because Jesus is coming soon. So maybe for those who are wondering, uh, what is the relevance of this whole uh, tour that uh, Pastor Ted Wilson has been having? Of course, uh, we would wish him to really respond to, to be the one to respond to this, but of course, your office is also well equipped to be able to give us a feedback on that. Well, you know, you know, it, the Lord is always trying to encourage his people to be inspired, full of the, the spirit. And I think Pastor Wilson, as the leader of the World Church, wanted to come and just give us encouragement. You know, when you're busy, you're working, you're trying to do the Lord's work, the enemy is also there trying to discourage people. And, and maybe you feel like you're, you're, maybe you're not doing enough, or maybe the Lord doesn't even notice. Yes. But, you know, when the, the, the president, the leader of God's remnant church himself comes and looks you in the face, takes time to share with you a message, it lets you know that not only has he remembered, 
but that the Lord himself has also remembered. And it's just an encouragement to all of us to keep working, to be stronger and stronger for the Lord's soon return. One of the messages that, uh, one of the messages really that stood out for me, especially during yesterday's meeting uh, in Nakuru, where Pastor Ted Wilson was speaking uh, to a huge, huge audience. I couldn't believe it was on a Monday. Yeah, I thought it was yeah, on a Sabbath, yeah, you yeah. know. But he spoke to the need for us not to get distracted because by virtue of being in this particular world, I mean, there are so many uh, distractions around us. Yet he was talking about our commitment in focusing on Jesus for us really to make any uh, headways when it comes to the mission. Amen. You know, I think that it's so true and this is one of the things that we love about this president of our church he's very 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 focused on the mission of the church and you know he made the point that if we don't focus on mission we'll get distracted with so many different things controversies among ourselves we'll be trying to divide up the spoils or the riches of this world instead of focusing on the treasures in heaven above and so what an important message now that we're even 5 million people in this division, 1.13 million members right here in Kenya, it would be so easy for us to become a little bit complacent. But what he's saying is, the journey is not finished yet. We have so much work to do. So we need to stay united, focus on that great goal of reaching, I believe it's 50 million people here in Kenya. Uh, we need to focus on that great goal. That will keep us united and focused on Jesus instead of attacking one another or looking for the things in this world. Right. Finally, finally, what's your message? Because we have uh, a live audience, people who have been following this particular visit and just the messages that have come with it. Maybe if you have any final words that you would want to speak to those of us who, who, who are watching uh, this particular program. Online. You know, I think the, the, the thing that I would probably say, and I'm certain that Elder Wilson would agree with this, is do be discouraged, be focused. You know, the Lord does not want us to just to be just another church here in Kenya or here in this division, not just another church. No, the Lord actually wants to win Kenya for Jesus Christ. He wants to win Tanzania for Jesus Christ, DRC for Jesus Christ. So I would say to the Adventist members especially, if let us focus and pray. That is the number one thing that we need to do as God's people. Let's get together and in an extraordinary way, let's fall on our knees and ask God to actually give us the nations. It's not about being a big giant church. It's about Jesus Christ having the nations that he died for to prepare us so that he can return soon and take us all home. Thank you so much. Maybe if you find someone else before we end this broadcast that you wish us to speak to, uh, we'll be right here waiting. Right. Thank you so much Thank for your so time. Much, yes. Wish you well. All right, so there you have it. We have been coming to you live from the Adventist University of Africa here in Kenya, where it also the, we also host uh, the regional head office of the Adventist Church in Eastern Central Africa. We're so glad that you, you could find time really to speak to us. I don't know if there's anyone else. I think uh, because of time, uh, we can be able to end it there. Uh, but just to say that this has been the pastoral visit of Elder Ted Wilson, who has been here for the last two days, yesterday and today, today marking the end of that particular exercise. And of course, from here he'll be moving to Tanzania right this afternoon, where he's also expected to meet church members, address them, and uh, just speak to the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And so, um, oh, okay. All right, I'm also joined uh, by the principal of Maxwell Adventist Academy, which is also hosted on this particular hill. So glad to have you, sir. How are you feeling? Uh, feeling very well, thank very you. Good, so, very it's good. a great program. Great. What's your impression of uh, Pastor Ted's uh, pastoral visit to this particular region, and uh, what, do you, what did you de deduce from all this, uh, especially his message that he's had today? Well, for me, you know, it's a big challenge to us because... Uh, his whole message, even in Nakuru, I heard him yesterday, it's Jesus is coming soon, get ready, you know, uh, prepare, spread the message. Uh, to me, it's very, very touching to know that uh, our world leader is traveling the whole globe, challenging all of us. So, uh, to me, very, very meaningful. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. And because he has, in almost 
uh, every every opportunity he has had to speak, he has emphasized on personal commitment when it comes to the issues of mission, really encouraging church members and all of us to be involved. And of course, you lead a team of young people, and young people cannot, we cannot have a conversation around mission without involving young people. Perhaps if you can speak to that and the involvement of Maxwell Academy when it comes to the mission of this church. Absolutely. You know, our purpose at Maxwell is to prepare Christian leaders who will go out and really spread this gospel and uh, make a difference in the world. And uh, one of the ways we've done that in not too distant past, we've uh, drilled a well for some Maasai girls. Uh, we've also been out distributing food and water during this drought. So we're helping people to know that they can make a difference even though maybe, you know, they, they don't feel like they have so much ability to do a lot, but they can do little things along the way. So we are very much encouraging that in our uh, weeks of prayer, in our Bible classes, everything we're doing, we're emphasizing mission, emphasizing personal commitment, and uh, making a difference to our communities, wherever we might live. Yeah, so Maxwell is all about mission, all about uh, being a mission school, uh, developing young people who will really put their life in the hands of God. You know, there's a difference between saying, yes, I believe in Jesus, difference in that, and saying, God, I put my life in your hands. Use me in whatever way uh, you see fit, because you know me better than I know myself. Yeah, so that's that's what really Maxwell is all about. Thank you so much, and wish you well. Thank you for finding time to come and speak to us. Wish you well. All right, have a good one. Thank you. Okay, I don't know if we still have any other person coming. Yes, I can see we have uh, Pastor come. Just join me, join me here, join me here for a moment. I just want to get your impression of uh, the visit that we've had with the world church leader, Pastor Ted Wilson, over the last two days. Yesterday he was in Nakuru and today we've just been here meeting the Advent Hill community, Maxwell Advances Academy, AUA, ECD, and all that. What has been your impression from today's uh, activities, especially the message from Pastor Ted? has been a very, very great blessing. It's a great blessing to have the world leader in this place. He always comes with great inspiration, words of wisdom, good advice, and more so on his mission orientation. We can say this is a very great reawakening for us. And we pray what he has said, the message he presented in Akuru, the message he has presented here, that we may go ahead and implement every part of it. It's a great blessing, and we pray he can come more. But more so what he has told us, because he has uh, the whole world to go to, what he has presented, I pray that we go and implement it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor, for joining us. Of course, that has been Pastor uh, Muasia, Paul Muasia. And I'm joined here by students from Maxwell Advances Academy. How are you guys feeling? Oh, we're feeling great. Good, good. Uh, Move closer to me. Move closer to me. Uh, I just want to... meeting um, the lead of the Adventist Church and like it was such an honor because like I've always seen him online and stuff like that yeah so it was nice good good move closer to me give him a uh, okay well, how about you um this was a very nice experience we got to meet Ted Wilson um he also told us amazing things also Nancy Wilson told us um you may know who's your best friend right. but then your best friend is always going to be Jesus okay for me, it was an amazing experiment because it was my first time to meet President Ted Wilson. Yeah, in person, yeah. Yeah, for me, it was an amazing experience. Uh, it's nice to see someone that special. Like, I don't really do that in a while. And it's nice to see the president of the Adventist Church. It's really amazing for me. Wow. And of course, it was an amazing experience having you guys come and just, uh, you know, cheer up the whole you know moment and uh, you know it was great yeah okay, you want to say something yeah i got his autograph it was very oh, nice nice and his preaching was also touching and how he came all the way from the u.s to africa to tell us keep on the mission and know god and he is the i am let me ask you one question you guys because we've been talking about everyone getting involved in mission and you know doing something to make sure that you reach out and bring win a soul to christ uh -huh. what are some of the possible practical strategies at your age perhaps that you think you can use to reach out because you guys are not trained theologians right 
But of course, the Bible is telling us that all of us have a role to play. So which are some of those practical ways perhaps you use to reach out to your friends and speaking to them about the Word of God? I think it's showing um, our kind love to them and showing God's steps to them and to help them slowly by slowly to show them God is there and He has a plan for them. Even though you can't see the past, there's a light in the end of the road. Great, great. So, yes. Um, also, like in today's day, and, like okay, today um, most of us are influenced by the social media and stuff. Like that's a very great platform to um, spread the word. And also, um, Pastor Ted, if you're watching this, um, we love you. Um, yeah, thanks. That's it. Great. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, all right. Uh, hi. How are you? Yay. All right. Thank you for joining us. Just move here, move closer here. Um, what's, what's, your, what's your take from today's uh, message from Pastor Ted Wilson? Um, I really loved the way he preached today, and it was really amazing. Um, so, like, I just um, understood that we should always, like, um, remember God in our prayers, and, like, we should always honor Him and everything, yeah. Good. Good. Thank you so much, and uh, of course, these are students from Maxwell Adventist Academy, very excited for what has an opportunity really of a, a lifetime for them really to get an, a, a chance to meet the uh, president for the World uh, Adventist World Church. And of course, uh, we have been coming to you live from Maxwell Adventist Academy. And uh, thank you for your time, for watching. We hope to see you again when we move to Tanzania. We shall be streaming from Tanzania, I believe, from tomorrow. And so Pastor Ted from here is headed to Tanzania. And then right after that, he's, he shall be going to uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. If we get another opportunity, perhaps, to speak to him. Oh, and I'm seeing uh, an elderly member of uh, this church. Caribbean, Caribbean, hapa mama utu utuambie wewe umefraishwa na nini kuhusiana na ujio wa mchungaji Pastor Ted Wilson hapa ni mara yako ya kwanza kumuona na ama ni umemuona hapo awali ah nimefurahi sana nimefurahi sana hata nisome nini nifuraha nifuraha tele asante kwa sababu huyu 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 president siku yangu ya kwanza kumuona sasa nimefurahi kuona president wetu kutoka America mwenye kusimamia atfendest yote nimefurahi sana asante sana asante sana mama tumeshukuru aha so uh, you can hear everyone is excited and just appreciative of the opportunity to one be able to uh, have an, a chance and uh, um, i don't know if we still have any other person but uh, I just want to really, really appreciate you and thank you for finding time to be here with us, watching and following these proceedings live, coming to you from the Adventist University of Africa here in Kenya. My name is Justus, and thank you so much. I hope to see you again next time. God bless you.